because the Hawaiian culture is so tied to land and so tied to the assets of our land, you know, utilizing as many local ingredients as possible, like that actually says a lot, right? And a lot of these farmers that we're sourcing from are Hawaiian people, right? So like that in itself is giving back to um, the people that are growing our ingredients. Welcome to Hen House Unruffled, an audio companion to the beers of Hen House Brewing Company. Each episode, we'll take a deeper dive into each beer's concept, recipe, can art, sensory, and more with your hen host, Fridge. What up? What's up, Unruffled listeners? It's Fridge, your host for the Hen House Unruffled podcast. Today, Bob Sayer and I are joined by the incredible Naeha Breland, co-founder of Ola Brewing Company based in Hawaii. And we're here to discuss our recent collaborative effort, We're From Here. This beer is a Almond Joy-inspired porter using both California almonds and Hawaiian coconut. Listen in as we discuss everything from the origins of Ola Brewing Company and their push for agricultural development on the islands to the shared similarities between owning and operating a brewery in Hawaii and here in Sonoma County. Without further ado, let's get it going. Welcome to the Unruffled Podcast. And I don't want to butcher your name. Um, it's Naeha? Yes, Na perfect. Naeha, yeah. Yes, and you are from Ola Brewing. Yes. We are super excited to be doing a collaborative beer with you. I, you. I personally am very excited that we are doing a almost like Almond Joy inspired porter. Yeah. This is going to be one of my all-time favorite beers I already know. Easy. and. You have really put in a lot of work um, <laughs> for this beer already. I know you were just telling me about that during the uh, the brew session. Yeah. You like processed all the coconut for this beer. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So um, do you want me to introduce myself? Or like, <laughs> yeah. Or we, we should probably yeah. have you introduce yourself. And then yourself. go into the coconut? <laughs> yeah, okay. for sure. Yes. Now um, is in fact more than just a coconut no. processor. <laughs> um, Forgive me. My, no, no, no. All good. All good. My name's Naeha. Um, I am the co-founder and president of Ola Brew, also director of marketing for Ola Brew. And yeah, we got to meet Colin on his trip to the Big Island, I think it was like six months ago or something. And that kind of formed a cool opportunity to come out and do a collab with you guys. So definitely super excited. I was telling these guys before we started that Hen House is definitely like my favorite other brewery than Ola Brew. So um, we we love it. So yeah, we're really excited to to get something. Um, the whole premise of our brewery is is to utilize as many local ingredients as we possibly can, and and you know grow and increase the agricultural economy in Hawaii. And so you'll see if if you know you look up our beers, there's all kind of fruits and and botanicals in there. Um, and so it just seemed perfect to create a brew with you guys that was using something from Hawaii and using something from California. And so that's kind of where the the almond joy esque came from and uh yeah so we were looking for a commercially produced coconut and we actually don't have that in Hawaii so we found a bunch of coconuts we harvested a bunch of coconuts and I cracked them open one by one took all the meat off the shell grated it all and it was there in the brewery this morning so (laughs) wow yeah (laughs) it was a lot of it was a lot of coconut (laughs) <laughs> That's wild. That's like if we were making oyster stout and we just like went out to tamales and you caught all the oysters yeah. ourselves. <laughs> just dragged them yeah. in and shucked them. <laughs> wow. Perhaps I'm alone as a ignorant Californian. Mm-mm. They don't make coconuts in Hawaii? That's. I feel like I've been lied so to. The, so we grow... <laughs> A zillion coconuts in Hawaii. We, okay. we grow a lot of coconut in Hawaii and it's used for coconut water, but like, you know, stands on the side of the road or mm-hmm. something, right? There's no commercially produced or processed coconut in Hawaii. Um, a lot of that probably is coming from, you know, probably Asia, right? Asia, yeah. South yeah. America, you know, there's not necessarily the infrastructure in Hawaii to, you know, these, these huge, uh, Uh, dehydrators or, you know, um, to process all that. And so uh, that's actually something that's huge that we take very seriously in our business is, okay, well, how do we create this infrastructure to utilize all the abundance of everything that we have in Hawaii, you know? So we tend to do things like that quite often. We, We juice every single fruit that goes into anything, any one of our beverages, 
in our facility. So we have like thousands and thousands of pounds of fruit, whether it's pineapples, um, lilikoi, dragon fruit, all the citrus you can think of coming through our facility, lychee, thousands of pounds a week, and we're juicing all that and putting it into our beverages. Wow. Yeah. yeah. That really parallels the Admiral. We, there's a company here called Admiral Malting that cool. we've had that discussion several times on the podcast that I think the consumer thinks about local sourcing mm-hmm. strictly at the farm level. Right. And it's wonderful when you mm-hmm. eat things in the exact same form that they come off of a tree in. But totally. That's, but there's actually a million uses for things, particularly in brewing. Yeah. There's all these levels of processing first. So when Colin, right. our founder, was at Thirsty Bear, which was owned by the guy who founded Admiral Maltings, mm-hmm. they made a locavore beer. It had one malt and one hop because they were limited by what was actually grown locally. And then they had to pump a bunch of diesel into the malt to send it to Colorado to turn right. it from, you know, raw barley into yeah. malt and then back in that kind of like... Defeated the purpose. Defeats, defeats yeah. the purpose, right? right. Like it, it makes complete sense when mm-hmm. you're talking about, you know, an island. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That those next steps could be very, very complicated and very, very expensive. I totally, imagine. totally. Well, and to that point, like we definitely have a bunch of beers. We probably have, you know, 14 or 15 beers on tap, but we have also gone the other direction or, or beyond beer, right, to our seltzers and ciders and hard teas um, because we can utilize more local ingredients, right? Like mm, yeah. the, the grains, the hops, you can grow hops um, in Hawaii, but it's just not the perfect climate for it, right? So right. you're not going to get the yield you get, say, here or mm. in Oregon or Washington. Or, well, just you the know. amount of land you need. Exactly. And yeah, that's right. that's yeah. quite a bit as well. But yeah, so the the whole idea of our business started actually with the idea that we are going to be making ciders and specifically because like you're saying a lot of people think the farm to table is you know they're just looking at the actual fruit or the actual vegetable but you know if if we're looking at value added goods we can utilize uh, fruits for longer or or maybe not necessarily like the most beautiful looking fruit it doesn't have to look aesthetically pleasing it just has to taste good right so right. we mm-hmm. take the b grades and you know things that people can't necessarily sell mm-hmm. and then we'll purchase that from them so they're they're increasing their revenues yeah. and that's sort of stuff's like perfect to process for a beverage cuz right. you know you can exactly. you can taste it but you can't see it right? totally <laughs> totally yeah it sounds sort of familiar uh to me like growing up in sonoma county like i was born in santa rosa and Mm -hmm. you know we have like a lot of microclimates around here you know a total abundance like a fruit basket sort of like zone i've never been to hawaii and like i always like dreamed of it sounds amazing but i I have to imagine like i've I've heard people that have traveled around anyway and they Mm -hmm. they tell me like hawaii and sonoma county like my two favorite places in the world and (laughs) (laughs) that to me is like makes me feel really special and totally um i just love hearing that uh you're using that like local abundance and Mm. i wonder are there any like um real exports like in the like fruit like zone of of hawaii like that are coming over here or is there just like because i know you can't like really get like pineapples off the island right and now you can't really get coconuts off the right. island <laughs> <laughs> yeah so actually that's a really good point so because you know we are the furthest land mass away from from anywhere right or the islands away from anywhere we're 2500 miles away from anywhere so if we are you know exporting it costs a lot right and then not not to mention the inputs that you have to get there to grow the things right right um so pineapple for instance um was widely grown sugar was widely grown in hawaii um and has since been you know sent out to other places in asia and south america to where they can grow cheaper Mm -hmm. and and more accessible you know and probably at higher volumes as well you know but we are you know that's that's why we're working on you know utilizing and creating the demand for more agriculture and as we are doing this there are you know i'm not saying we're the only ones doing it but there are there is like more and more um whether they're breweries value-added um, mm-hmm. food companies, you know, things like that, that are actually thinking more along these lines. Yeah. Um, and so we're definitely seeing more and more emphasis put towards growing locally and then packaging those goods, right? So there aren't necessarily a lot. I would say lychee is one um, that's that's sent out to the mainland. Let's see, some citrus even, which is kind of weird, but citrus grows like crazy in Hawaii. Um, so like the specialty citrus like pomelo and, and Buddha's hand. I don't yeah, know if Buddha's you guys know. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, Ramatan too. 
Um, I heard uh, you talking earlier about growing hops or trying your hand at that. And it's yeah. a little tricky on the island. Yes. Um, so you're using like some greenhouses and you've, you've tried like up to like 20 varieties. To- we have. So we've never actually brewed with the hops that we've grown. We were just we were just kind of uh, messing around before we opened our brewery to see if it was even like a possibility. So basically we built this whole hydroponic system and it worked. But again, like the environment wasn't exactly the right environment we could definitely manipulate it and create the perfect environment but i mean yakima's growing some great hops, right. you know? yeah totally there's, there's right. great and, and, hops and, and, that and, we can get so, elsewhere you know maybe you could do a wet hop beer then right but yeah. then like where are you gonna dry it where are you gonna exactly. pelletize it right like exactly. all of those uh, kind of after you know you mentioned farm to table right and people really only conceive of the farm and the table totally. right and there's like all these steps in between yeah i'd like to go back if we can did you just wake up one day and decide you wanted to make a brewery that was super focused on using native ingredients in hawaii or how did we get here yeah so um actually my co-founder brett he started a non-alcoholic beverage company about 12 years ago, 11 or 12 years ago, and with the same intention to support Hawaii's uh, agricultural economy, right? And I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with a fruit called noni. It's an endemic fruit to Hawaii. Ooh, no. And it's disgusting. It's, it's <laughs> like, it tastes like it's a fermented fruit. It tastes like kind of like dirty, wet socks, if you will, you know, (laughs) Um, but also very, very medicinal and, you know, has been used in Hawaii for centuries for its medicinal purposes. And so he created this shot, this energy shot, and it was actually sold here in Oliver's um, for a little while and a couple other places. But uh, it was like a supplemental shot, right? Sure. Um, really great. It was actually a really perfect energy shot. Um, he was kind of going against, uh, you know, five hour energy. Sure. Um, yeah, sure. And uh, yeah. And then I came on board maybe two years after that started. And again, the whole idea was to grow the ag economy. Me personally, I grew up on Molokai and um, Monsanto. Uh, you guys know that big giant. Um, sure. yep. They were the largest employer and took up about 70% of the usable ag land on Molokai, right? Not a lot of ag, like I was telling you guys before, Molokai mm-hmm. is very small. So always in the back of my mind, I'm always thinking like, okay, how can we create more opportunities for organic regenerative agriculture? Um, just because that was kind of ingrained in me as a young child. And so teaming up with Brett, starting to work as a marketing rep for for this company, Hawaiian Ola, was really cool. And then, you know, I built my way up in that company to the marketing director and then the CEO. And it was kind of brainstorming on figuring out how exactly we could increase our mission and support and impact our local farmers more that we came up with this idea of ciders, first of all. We actually did our first fundraising as Hawaii Cider Company. So we're mostly crowdfunded. We have 2,800 investors. (laughs) And yeah, so we started out with the cider idea and then probably about three months before we opened, we were like, you know what? I think people like beer too. (laughs) Maybe (laughs) we should do both. Yeah, absolutely. So um, we got into beer. We got more tanks um, and opened up as a brewery, cidery, and tap room at the end of 2017. And then, you know, have since just continued to grow. And, you know, the seltzer craze kind of was hitting like mid-2019, right? And so we were the first Hawaii brewery to make seltzers and got a lot of flack for that from just (laughs) like the industry everybody's like you guys come on (laughs) what are you doing but now honestly our we sell the most seltzer yeah and like it's crazy like a half a year later all those uh, people that were complaining started making their own seltzers exactly exactly (laughs) well and it also sounds like you guys didn't enter the space looking to be like an auteur, right? Like we right. have this beer, we must make it in this exactly. specific way. You entered the space with a mission that was much more kind of agricultural Based. oriented yep. and like wanting to, you know, take goods from the land and turn them into delicious things for people to drink. And totally. that's completely in line with, exactly. you know, kind of whatever people want to drink, yep. right? And yeah, that's what I always say. Like our North Star is growing the agricultural economy and mm. whatever whatever avenue it takes to get there, we'll do that. And were so. you yeah. 
involved in like I guess is, is it the slow food space or whatever you would call it out there beforehand um, or does this come from his being interested in producing beverages and he was definitely a huge part of the anti-GMO movement okay. here in San Francisco actually okay I guess what that was like 2010 or mm-hmm. something and then moved out to Hawaii and with his first business Hawaiian Ola it was kind of instead of you know continuing to go to all the rallies and continuing to be an activist in that space why not create a business that was combating those other businesses, right? right? So that's where that started. I think I used to drink those uh, little drinks because I worked at Community Market. They were little yellow <laughs> yeah. and, and green shots. Yeah, yep. yeah. Oh, those man. were them. Those were good. Those were yeah. good, right? They did yeah. the job. Like Guayaki also had like a little one. Yeah. Yep. But I would never drink the red, uh, or not the red bulls, but the yeah. uh, the five-hour energies because my cousins and aunt always drank those when I was a kid and I got sick on them. Yeah. <laughs> but I do love those little shots. Those are yeah. awesome. You were a much more ethical 20-year-old than I was. I could crush <laughs> some five-hour <laughs> <laughs> Man, I probably still have like, you know, stuff in me that's not supposed to be there. Right? Yeah, twenty-three <laughs> year old fridge was very conscious about what what went inside. His body. <laughs> not so much thirty-two year old. Fridge. <laughs> um, but uh, that is super cool. I love that you and Brett are like pushing to keep that agricultural like growth like happening on the mm-hmm. island. I think that's like really admirable and awesome. Um, and honestly, like I love seeing like the the abundance of the island like bring prosperity back to the people that are actually mm. from there mm-hmm. you know and i love the the name of the beers we're from here and totally. it kind of has like a double meaning too right because like brett was originally from here yeah and you were originally from there and and now you're both from there right yeah so i actually i grew up on molokai i was born in sebastopol though yeah oh, really <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Kind of crazy, but yeah. So we're both from here and there. Mm-hmm. How about yeah, that? <laughs> that's perfect. That's perfect. Yeah. And the co- the coconuts are from here slash there. And yeah, right. The almonds the, are from here slash there. The almonds right. are from here. And the beer is being made here. Yeah, and we're it's beautiful. from here. We're from here. <laughs> yeah. It's being made right now, or it's almost finished, probably. So yeah. for me, what was interesting when we, when Colin threw that name at me and the concept. This is the classic how Collab started this company is called sent an email. <laughs> right. It's like, hey, I met these cool people. We should do something. And I'm just like, okay, awesome. uh, hi, I'm Sayer. <laughs> um, but the we're from here aspect, kind of what Fridge was touching on, mm-hmm. being from a place in reality, like waking up in the morning and going to work in a yeah. place that for the vast majority of people lives as like kind of a fantasy mm-hmm. is interesting, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, like California's got the whole California dreaming thing, right? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. um, well, and even as, like locally here, the wine country, yeah. right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly, yeah. 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 And so yeah, like it's, it's super funny, uh, you know, I'll be like, oh, I'm from Sonoma County and I grew up right around here. And like literally right up the street and people are like, oh, wine country. And I'm like, well, no, it actually just kind of smelled like cow shit. And then like, you know, like, but you, you'll you hear kind of second and third hand like animosity yeah. from people who kind of live their lives mm-hmm. in Hawaii yeah. and towards tourists and towards others who use it in a very specific kind of way. Yeah. Yeah. I guess conceptually or like, like, cause I imagine your business is more retail, more wholesale. We do a lot of retail. Yeah. Um, and I mean, opening a second tap room, it's balancing stuff out for sure. Mm-hmm. But yeah. And so, you know, you're dependent on those folks mm-hmm. who may not kind of appreciate the everyday mundane aspects mm-hmm. of life that need to take place in these touristy places. Yeah. So what's the, like, what is your relationship to that? You know, I think that Hawaii definitely is a very special place. And so I, I understand the attraction, right? Um, and yes, it's, it's beautiful. And so people definitely want to come and visit it. And I think always, as a native Hawaiian person, it's always um, important to educate a little bit, you know what I mean, about what has gone on there. Like, the not to get too deep or dark, but the, the history in Hawaii is... It's pretty intense and and it does have, yeah, it does have, you know, a dark, uh, dark turns in there, you know, and, you know, there was a monarchy in Hawaii and and that was annexed by the British and then the American government, you know, so that was pretty new, you know, so it's, it was like the turn of, of, um, the 19th century is, is when that all went down. Right. Mm -hmm. So 
you know, just like different elements here on, you know, mainland continental U.S. Like, right. there's still stuff um, that goes on. And I think that Hawaii is in um, kind of a Hawaiian renaissance right now where, you know, the language is coming back for a long time. Like, you weren't able to speak the language. It was, it was like, forbidden to speak the Hawaiian language. So um, Hawaiian language is coming back. Hula is being celebrated. You know, cultural aspects are being celebrated. And so people coming into Hawaii, I think it's just important to really respect that that mm-hmm. process you mm-hmm. know what i mean and and like exactly the the beer that we're we're making we're from here you know what i mean it's it's something to be proud of even you know like even here in sonoma county like you don't live on a vineyard but you're still proud of <laughs> you know what i mean like you're still right. proud of where you're at you know um but yeah it's definitely like there is a hawaiian culture there and i think that that's something that people don't necessarily expect you know what i mean they expect like beautiful beaches awesome we're gonna come and 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 have our trip here and it's great and and then we're gonna go home but i think the lasting impact could be actually kind of understanding a little bit of the culture and yeah and is there any way you can i'm always like i'm always thinking about like how you infuse a product with meaning like that Mm -hmm. right and most of the time it's not going to be appreciated but is there anything you guys have been able to do that you're kind of like pat yourself on your back with with your marketing hat on of like oh like i hope that so and so recognizes their themselves or their history in this product. Totally, like totally. So honestly, I think part of because the Hawaiian culture is so tied to land and so tied to the assets of our land, you know, utilizing as many local ingredients as possible, like that actually says a lot, right? And a lot of these farmers that we're sourcing from are Hawaiian people, right? So like that in itself is giving back to um, the people that are growing our ingredients. And then really like, again, kind of putting in an authentic way, like adding different, you know, little tidbits here or there for educational pieces, right? So like, for instance, in our tap room, we have uh, six different coasters that have on one side, they have like, Ola is life, Ola in Hawaiian means life. And it, then it says like, enjoy it or share it. And on the back, there's what we call Ola lo noyaos, which are like, um, proverbs basically that have you know the Hawaiian or the Olalo version and then the English version and so you know it's just an it's just a, a way to share like hey this is this is what we're about you know mm-hmm. and um, yeah to like, I love respect that. and celebrate the heritage like exactly. in that way that's totally. super awesome totally yeah. love that so I'm interested in what selling beer is like in such a tourist dominated economy uh, my only awareness of that at all was we had a little flirtation with Las Vegas. Mm. And I remember like, okay, so handles here cost 40 grand. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it just, that's that's the scale, right? Yeah. Like, look, I've got a captivated thousand people yep. getting drunk a day here. Like, you're going to pay for this, this presence, right? Yeah. Um, obviously, that's an extreme example. Yeah. But, you know, for example, so much of what Hen House's goals are are being relevant to the people who live here. Exactly. Where I imagine you know, the populations of some of the places you sell beer are half people who don't live there, Mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and um, we have definitely taken your same approach, right? So, like, we are catering to the market of people that live in Hawaii. Okay. Um, And then it's, for us, it's a plus when when tourists are, you know, visiting our tap room or purchasing our stuff in the stores. But definitely, like, you will read on Yelp or or TripAdvisor or whatever, oh, this is the local spot. Come Mm -hmm. here, you know? (laughs) Um, Nice. so, So that's definitely, I think, we're very similar in that way. And then also, I mean, this isn't a plus I guess but like so we have like Kona Brew or Maui Brew right those Mm. scream Hawaii because they're locations in Hawaii right right Right. we're Ola Brew that could come from anywhere Mm. so really um educating on the back end with you know Aina inspired we're definitely land inspired right Mm -hmm. so yeah I mean it's it's a tricky thing but we're not we're definitely not trying to cater to the tourist well, economy and you, you just, know you just kind of articulated two examples yeah if you know what ola means yeah right exactly then you're like, oh that's hawaiian yeah right and if you know what it's a, what the word that means land is i know yeah yeah, yeah. And you, you know you see that you could have written locally sourced right like drinks or whatever totally. right but you wrote it in such a way that like you, you get the audience you ask for yeah right and so you, people people who do understand the meaning of those statements yeah. see that and they're like oh this is targeting me yeah right exactly like, exactly yeah, and I would even say, like, in Sonoma County, I, it feels like we're very tourist-oriented in, in our own way, you know? Like, mm. And we sort of 
have that as part of our identity. You know, I grew up in Guerneville and it's just like part of the year is when the locals make their money, when the tourists come through, you know, like we cater to people coming to visit. Like that is what it's all about. But I really appreciate Hen House for being like a Sonoma County manufacturing job that I'm proud of that is about supporting the community. Totally. And I can see parallels with Ola and Hen House in that way. Yeah. And that's super rad. Awesome. Yeah, it's really, like, I'm really into it. And we're, we're all sitting right next to our company mission, which is, you know, one of them is generate wealth for our community, which you guys are doing, but you're also having other local industries tie into the work you're doing yeah. and that's so tight like you know we love oyster stout but beyond that except for like the occasional fruit edition mm-hmm. there isn't like a another layer to mm-hmm. that like the way hen house generates wealth for for our community is by being this great manufacturing job by being a big company that has lots of aspects to it we produce beer we have tasting rooms we have a logistics team we have sales folks art marketers there's lots of jobs yeah. <laughs> but the fact that y'all are are tapping into other local businesses right. and really keeping that going. I'm like, how do we like make a Luther Burbank rose beer? Like, what do we do? Like, <laughs> yeah. our, you know, you were just at our brewery. Our brewery is like right behind a bunch of car dealerships. Like, how do we like juice a Civic and like right. make a beer out of that or something? I got news like, for you, Bob. That Civic wasn't built in Santa Rosa. <laughs> yeah, it probably wasn't. Um, <laughs> but I, I just, I can't stop thinking about that. Mm. It is uh, just so cool. It's so cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and I think it. hopefully we can take that as an inspiration slash challenge. I know that mm. our brewers just visited Crane. Yeah. Here, right up the street who are, yeah. are growing malt now and I think even processing it locally now. They've just started doing hops as well. Mm-hmm. Obviously, like, the scale thing comes up real fast. Yeah. Right? Sure. Like, it comes up real fast when you actually go to a place like Yakima and you're like, oh, you're like, like, oh, this is like fields and fields and fields. Yeah. 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 Everything um, the light touches. Yeah. Yeah. Producing yeah. hops. Right? <laughs> um, Lion King we, IPA. Yeah, that was yeah. Lion King. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, yeah. good one. Uh, did we source Wait, did the happen? corn for teammates no. oh, from okay. Crane? That's a really good one. Yeah. Uh, no, we sourced the malt. There's Genie in there, which is right. a, the malt that they grow, which Admiral malts. But the corn is actually from a uh, locavore operation across the country. Mm. Oh, okay. Anson Mills, okay. Bloody Butcher corn yes was in that beer. beautiful um, local thoughtful corn from north carolina from like yeah three <laughs> and a half three, three and a half thousand yeah. miles away but delicious and yeah i mean that does get tricky the, the one other layer bob which which is where the rubber meets the road on that like mm. trying to crack the draft handles in the hyatt right is another way to build wealth for your community is you sell to other independent businesses that mark mm-hmm. your product up turn it into right. profit right yep. and like you know beer can be a very essential part of the profit engine of another small business, right? Mm-hmm. True, um, absolutely. But uh, that's uh, that's really, really laudable and really cool. So did Colin just wander into your brewery, or how did this happen? He did, yeah. Um, and actually... <laughs> I'm 0% Colin, surprised. Yes, Colin was did. reading TripAdvisor. <laughs> no. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Literally walked into your production facility? <laughs> well, so he actually... Yeah, I had just gotten done doing a tour for somebody just settling back into my desk. And that's that's what happens all day for me. You know what I mean? Like, somebody's like, hey, somebody wants to see you. And I'm like, okay. And um, yeah, so I, I was my tapper manager comes in and she's like, Hey, there's a guy from a brewery. Uh, he wants to see if he can take a tour around the, around the brewery. And I was like, I guess, <laughs> you know? So I come out, I come out of the office into the tap room and I see his hen house shirt. And I was like, wait, you're from hen house. That's awesome. Yes, of course. I'll show you around the brewery. And I had to tell him, um, one of the first things that we talked about was, Probably a year before we opened Ola Brew, I went to your guy's Santa Rosa location, and Greg was behind the bar, and we got two flights, and, you know, I kind of thought, oh, he's going to be bummed, you know, <laughs> that, I, that I'm making him pour flights. And so he pours the flights, brings him out, and sits down with us and talks to us for about 10 to 15 minutes about every single beer and was so educated and so just knowledgeable about everything that you guys are doing it really stuck with me and that was actually I told Colin this that was the first story that I told 
our first staff members in our Kona tap room because that was the quality that I wanted to see. That was the experience that I wanted all of our guests to have. So when Colin showed up in our brewery, I was like, Super stoked. And Aww. yeah. yeah that's that's right. awesome. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna need you to remove Greg's name from that. We can't have his ego taking that at all. That's, yeah, yeah. I was gonna say that's gotta be the stinger. Like that's yeah, gotta yeah, be yeah, what we're totally promoting. Yeah, just yeah. remove Greg's name. Yeah. Yeah. And then it can be the stinger. Just yeah. like all of a sudden it's like Sayer. <laughs> yeah. In my voice. Yeah. 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 Uh, Shout out to awesome. our flight attendants for putting it down. Mm-hmm. Greg is the man. I absolutely yeah. love Greg. And he was working hard today cleaning those draft lines. Yeah. Poison boys. Yeah. Hashtag awesome. poison boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to shit on Greg real quick. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, no. yeah. So then, so then we, sh- we, I showed him around the brewery. We, we chatted for a couple hours and he said that he thought that his sales team might be, you know, bummed if he didn't ask about you guys potentially distributing some of our Beyond Beer products, which would be awesome. We're still definitely um, interested. And then I said, I would be kicking myself if I didn't ask about a collab. So, (laughs) you know. Um, Yeah. So then, that's that's how it's We should do both of those things. On the subject of collabs, um, on the island, you've collabed before with another brewery, right? Yes. So actually, the only other Hawaii brewery we've ever collabed with was actually Kona Brew. And that was three years ago. That was their very first collaboration. They were 20, 23 years old. Jesus. That um, so amazing. And, uh, Talk about the old guy at the club. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was really cool. We did a cream ale, some kind of special cream ale. And then we've done a couple, actually, the three other collabs that we've ever done have been breweries from Sonoma County, actually, <laughs> or or like around this area. So we did um, one with Three Disciples. Yo. Um, right at the beginning of their, it was probably like two months after they opened or something. Um, yeah. And then we did Pond Farm Brewing. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So oh, y'all got that, great was that, taste. Was that in the Justin Rankin era of Pond Farm Brewing? Perhaps. It's a good question. Could have been. That Form, is a great another question. former henhouse guy. Yeah. Oh. Oh, really? Was did he have like a big long beard? Yeah. I mean, in this industry, that hardly identifies somebody. But <laughs> but yes, shockingly enough, he did. <laughs> I'm like that was definitely. No. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so we did we did a Russian Imperial milk stout with those guys. Um, awesome. That was delicious. Yeah, we love Pond Farm. They are yeah. super amazing, and Three Disciples is super rad too. Yeah, yeah, um, good totally. choices. Yeah. Well, so Brett helped Three Disciples um, build a couple different parts of their brewery, and then he went to high school with Trevor. I'm or blanking what? on her name. Trevor's wife. Oh, uh, Stephanie. 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 Yeah. 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 Stephanie. Yeah. And she, yeah, they're both awesome. They yeah. were on vacation in Hawaii, and we were like, you want to do a collab, man? Oh, that's so, yeah, so that's awesome. awesome. Stephanie so, yeah. is amazing. She's and amazing. I love Trevor, too. I've known yeah. him for a long time. Oh, yeah. He used to work at uh, Fog Belt back in the day. Dope. Uh, another local brewery. Yeah. yeah. Super cool. Mm-hmm. Work. This industry, the tightest. Um, <laughs> uh, speaking of excellent tasting room experiences, we were talking about that. Yeah. And you have some pretty good tasting room education. We were talking about that before that started. Mm-hmm. I want to hear about that. And then with your second spot, I'm kind of curious. This is kind of our question, too. How do you kind of keep that culture going like between multiple locations? Mm, it that's it sounded good. like location one is is a good ways away from like the newer spot and then mm-hmm. you're working on spot three totally totally so as far as education uh we definitely like all of our all of our staff to be at least beer service cicerone certified um bang and <laughs> and you know if actually there are incentives to be cicerone level two certified yeah raises things like yeah. that um it just helps right it's um i mean i'm not level two certified but um i would i would love to be it's it's definitely a good education and and always important to be able to communicate with people on on beer people on on the same level you yeah know? and then as far as just like the the culture in both tap rooms what's super interesting is i i feel like while we have a very strong core culture in our business, and that's always quality, like we always talk about, you know, our purpose as a brewery and and the mission that we have to support the ag economy, and that's kind of like how people really are bought in and understand and like are very passionate about what we're doing, um, as well as the fact that then it's also making really delicious beverages. Um, yeah. But 
you know, it's it's really interesting because our tap rooms are actually kind of different. You know, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's, there, like our first tap room in Kailua Kona, it's definitely, we've had an evolution um, from, to our second tap room, you know? Sure. Um, Brett and I created our whole, you know, food menu in Kona um, and it's delicious. We both like food a lot, so that's awesome. But then we have a chef in our second tap room um and he is amazing he was born and raised in hilo and then spent like you know 12 to 15 years in southern california working under a lot of incredible chefs Um, the last place he worked at was a michelin star restaurant and so he's now back in hawaii super happy stoked to be home um and um, has created this awesome menu that people really really enjoy so like in our second tap room while the the drinks and and brews are definitely the focus our food is also like holding its weight, right? Yeah. And then you mentioned a third location. We we are looking at other tap room spaces, but we also um, just purchased a location for what will be our distillery. Um, and in our distillery, we will be distilling Okolehau, which is uh, the first spirit, or actually, really the first alcohol that was ever made in Hawaii, and it's it's wow. um, brewed from and distilled from the root ball of the tea plant, T.I. So Whoa. I'm not sure if you guys have ever been to Hawaii, but like Lao Lao conceived there, but never actually gotten to experience it. <laughs> nice. Um, wow, <laughs> learning so much yeah. about you, Bob. Yeah. Yeah. That is cool, Bob. Really learning a lot about your parents. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so so that third location uh, will be our distillery, and we're that's very very recent. So you know it'll probably be open within the next eighteen to twenty four months or so. We have a lot of renovating to do and and things like that, as well as again the agricultural aspect. We just started planting. We have probably about eight thousand tea plants in the ground right now on mm-hmm. forty acres, and that's three acres of the forty acres. So we're we're planting it out. Um, What's the fruit of that plant? It's not the fruit; it's the root. Right, I understand. Um, but what is, if you just let it grow, flowers or? Yeah, there's it's their leaves. So okay. it's it's just it's like uh, in the Hawaiian culture, it's definitely significant um, in lay making, in storing food. So it's like a grass. Pretty much. So yeah. So this is almost like agricultural rum. Um, kind of. Okay. Yeah. Or, but you're not pressing um, the grass; you're actually pressing the root. Root. Yeah. So the root then is um, like traditionally that root was put into an emu or an underground oven, um, roasted for like two to three days, and all those starches convert to sugars. Mm. Then it's the whole process of like mashing in and and then um, taking that liquid and distilling. Um, Heard. And yeah, so it's, it's pretty incredible. We have been working on the actual liquid for about two years and last year we just decided it, there were only like three of us who had actually tasted it um because you know it was like quiet under wraps <laughs> right. um and so we submitted it to the san francisco world spirits competition in a plastic jug with <laughs> with a blue label blue tape yeah saying okolehau fda approved um and it was pretty much like the laughing stock of the whole competition and then it won a double gold and best in class (laughs) there we go there's the redemption i was like wait a second yeah Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. so we we um have been winning international awards for it since since then and that's why we're we're now ready to to go all in and and very cool and then does that create like a base spirit that you would infuse with all these other fruits or is it much more about the the flavors that come from that process it's really just that very pure we're we're going purist on the on the okolehau for sure yeah because there's one other okolehau on the market right now i think in hawaii and um it's basically a rum so it's Mm -hmm. it is it is a rum with some tea flavor you know okay yeah and then that's going to be the hard focus of the distillery is making a okolehau yeah very cool yeah, and so we'll we'll get into you know aging on different woods and things like that. But mm-hmm. but for now we we uh, have been submitting it as an uh, other white spirit just straight off the still and right and it's it's been going well. <laughs> do you think you'll ever do like like what we do with beer with barrel aging? We'll use like sometimes we'll use wine barrels, mm-hmm. sometimes we we'll use maple syrup barrels. Uh, would you consider doing that with the Ecoleo maybe? Yeah. The, oh, the, the, the very cool the worlds. Our oyster. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I can hear yeah. Paddock raising his hand out there. He's like, no. when you're when you're done with one of those barrels. Yeah, can you please send yeah. me one of those barrels? Yeah. yeah. Daniel that's, Paddock is that's our all barrel happening, guy. You know? <laughs> uh, next time we'll collab again and then, you know, in a few years, then we'll 
sell it fresh, then we'll set some down in the barrel. Totally. Yeah. Send some totally. out to you guys. Like, and rad. we'll just float the barrel on the ocean. Yeah, yeah right? That's yeah. the way to do there it. There we uh -huh. go. Yeah. And isn't there um, a Hawaiian like version of an oyster? Weren't we just talking about this earlier? The opihi. The opihi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that grows, or not grows, but those, those um, live like on the shore. Um, and so they're like a mollusk that just sticks to the rocks, and, you know. How are they different yeah. from oysters? It's one. It's a one-sided oh. shell that just sticks to the rock. So it's like a like kind of like a hat. Right, 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 right. <laughs> on the rock. No, it totally a, makes not sense. Not a bivalve, but yeah, just not, a single yeah, valve. Yeah, exactly. yeah. A univalve, I guess. A univalve. Yeah. Yeah. I think it would be called a univalve. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Good work, Bob. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Univalve stout. Yeah. yeah. I know. That's what I was <laughs> yes. thinking. Is like got to do some kind of <laughs> spin on oyster, yeah. like oyster vacation or something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Like, check out this beer. It's no puts, oysters were harmed in this beer. Yeah, yeah. we've added spirits and meat we'll to it. Like, yeah. Who really wants some? But yeah, that does sound like us. Honestly. No, that totally sounds yeah. like us. Well, Neha, it was so cool of you to spend this much time with us. We couldn't be more excited about this beer. Yeah, we've never had our so act this together on a podcast. We're recording this podcast the same day the beer is being brewed. What? We have so much time to get this into the world. This yeah. never yeah. happens. No. Yeah. Wow. Um, really ahead of the game. So yeah, thank cool. you. Oh, thank you guys. Thank you guys. Um, and good. honestly, um, amazing guests. Like I, I loved having this conversation with you. Great. So thank you so much. Yeah. No, it was so nice to be here, you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. And we should really we we glossed over. I made a joke about you being a coconut processor, but <laughs> there was stress because this beer was conceived. It's going to have Hawaiian coconut and California almonds. And then I I was on the email chain with Nick Marrera that was just like. You know I can't buy Hawaiian coconut, right? And yeah. Like figure it out, and then they had like last up. week. Yeah, just, <laughs> great just, Sarah, You really put all the pressure on Naya. That no, I said figure it out to Nick. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> and, and then yeah, uh, she just raised her hand and was like, "I got you." Yeah. And then uh, the next email I saw was like, here's a tracking number. <laughs> and and uh, the big yellow cooler. Yeah. So there it's you go. really exciting. All the um, like cool things that you're doing over at Ola Brew. And Thanks, I really Likewise. can't wait to get to try this beer. Yeah. But would love to try some of the other beers someday, too. Yeah. So I'd, Totally. Yeah. And I'm just throwing it out there, you guys. Whenever you come to Hawaii, we would love to do a collab with you over there. I will so. be there June 3rd. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. funny because uh, my parents don't listen to this podcast. My family organized <laughs> a big like family trip, and I'm like, fuck. <laughs> and then now I'm actually stoked. So I'll Still. be there. Cool. Cool. On the Big Island? Or you can make it over? <laughs> uh, I think it's Maui. Okay. But I'm like, I could totally be wrong. We can see Maui from... So you can just... So I'll home. swim. Yeah, Dope. Totally. Yeah. yeah. All right. So I got to learn to swim. <laughs> and I got to figure out how to get... Uh, Wait, you don't know how to me. swim very I think well? it's surf. It's a joke. Just, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you can just... Put your board in Theater the water. The Today I found out and Sarah just, can't it swim, takes, and yeah. Bob was conceived in Hawaii. Right. The yeah. dolphins, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, the yeah. dolphins take you. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. how that harness, works. You harness okay. up a couple yeah. of dolphins, and then you can zip on over. Yeah. But no, I'm going to be like the the, the Howie in uh, White Lotus, and I'm going <laughs> to... Yeah. <laughs> Are you going to name your dolphin Lungreen? <laughs> dolphin Lungreen? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. That was filmed on Maui. You're probably staying there. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. I mean, uh, we're, we're renting an Airbnb, but nice. like not too far off otherwise demographically on my family. Yeah. 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 Oh. Again, they don't listen to the podcast. It's fine. Um, just, just like straight burns. <laughs> like, my mom listens to this podcast. <laughs> so does mine. Hi, mom. Yeah. Love you, mom. Yeah. Your mom's like, let me tell you about that trip, Bob. Mm. <laughs> 1980, Hawaii. Yep. It was Maui Waui and like a lot of sweet drinks, I'm sure. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> like Kokomo era Beach Boys. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, earlier, Michael Fajardo had a yeah. pretty <laughs> exactly. um, impressive knowledge of the, the musical referencing. Uh, he I was did. like, it's like, what the heck? Yeah. Yeah. What, were, what was his, the song? He um, was talking about the OP he meant. That's his oh, specialty. Right. It yeah, was amazing. Yeah. I was like, yeah. Yeah. And he's like, who was that? The Ka'al Crater, Crater Boys? I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Dude, Mike like a... F knows Hawaiian stuff. Like, you know. Oh, word. He Bob. listened to the Black Album for the first time two days ago, but he knows the OP he <laughs> Deeply. Oh. Deep. He, like, probably knows the OP man's, like, influences. <laughs> yeah. right. Shout out to Michael Fajardo. Yeah. <laughs> Always. Uh, Thank you again. You guys, thanks so much for having me. Yeah. It's Thank been you. awesome. That was yeah. great. Travel cool. safe. Hurry back. Another yeah. unruffled in the bag. <laughs> Delete that. <laughs> <laughs>
And now, Sensory First. Welcome to Sensory First, where we take a deep dive under the hood of the beers of the Hen House Brewing Company. We are getting into recipes, rationales, the reasoning, and we may even talk about the sensory experience of drinking these beers. Um, I am Bob from the marketing department with the incredible... Zach Kelly, brewmaster. Yeah, and we are talking about We're From Here, our brand new coconut porter. This is a lot of fun. Huge shout out to the folks at Ola Brewing in Hawaii who collabed with us on this, providing a lot of great recipe information and inspiration. And I'm going to go ahead and say, most importantly, shipping us a whole bunch of uh, Hawaiian coconut, which you can taste pretty uh Cocaliciously in this beer. Yeah, big almond coconut like on the on the front end here. We did use yeah. uh, California almond flour that. as part of the the collaboration between California and Hawaii, and I think it shows really quickly. You know, you get that uh, like almost almond joy right? candy. Uh, it's one percent of the grist, but I swear I'm picking it up. It's a loud beer. Usually, when I swirl beer in my glass, it doesn't make this much noise. And I spend a lot, a lot of my waking hours doing this exact motion. Doing a lot of swirling. Doing a lot lately. of swirling. A lot of swirling. <laughs> a lot of heating. We are bringing the temperature up in this beer a little bit more, allowing some of those molecules to get a little bit more excited and expressive. Maybe allowing some things to volatilize so we can get them up to our olfactory bulb. Yeah, I encourage everybody, uh, cup your beer, give a little swirl, get your nose in there. It's fun. We put a lot of work into this one. Bunch of different chocolate malts, but no actual chocolate. Yeah. Um, uh, some of that lactose. Yeah. Or that, that creamy, creamy chocolate milk sort of, sort of mouthfeel to it. Right. The coconut we got from, in, in wet coconut, which uh, came from toasted, like fresh from Hawaii and showed up in this, I guess because it had to be sent over the seas in like this yellow like biohazard containment uh, yeah. vessel. That's what I heard. It was <laughs> in a strange vessel when it finally arrived here. Yeah. And then we just had 25 pounds of wet coconut. We put a bunch into the boil, uh, put a bunch into the, into the secondary fermentation. And I think it shows really nicely. Awesome. Have you personally worked much with coconut? Do you have like any thoughts on like uh, better or worse coconut addition times? I mean, it's a it's an uncommon thing. There's lots of great coconut beer, but not every brewery makes one. Um, I think from this experience, uh, more in secondary seem to have a much bigger effect. Something we wanted to do is we use our dry hopping uh, tank to basically steep it. Right. So it was already cold. We more or less put it on top of a bunch of beer on top of the coconuts and then we more or less did like a toasted coconut extract more or less just with the beer as the extraction uh medium oh that's awesome really mellow bitterness i've been dying to see what sriracha ace was going to do in here um i am a big lover of sriracha ace a uh, very controversial hop due to its flavor profile uh, a lot of coconut or some people say a lot of dill i hear earth and lemon no i actually never ever hear that i occasionally <laughs> read earth and lemon i've never tasted it off of a, a big sriracha beer um or even doing like a sriracha ace hop rub it's all dylan coconut and i'm like always 100 here for it and i felt like it would do a really good job in this beer and i'm very excited to have my tongue report to my brain that it has in fact worked really well and this isn't a pickle coconut chocolate beer no this is not pickled coconut chocolate beer no dill notes whatsoever <laughs> no dilly no dilly and dallying about it mm -hmm. <laughs> The mouth feels really great. Lower carb. Uh, there's no prickly carbonation on this. Pretty chill. Yeah. But you really enjoy that kind of smooth mouth feel. Maybe a little more uh, some more almond coconut chocolate. Right. Milk. <laughs> I'm getting kind of like um, kind of like cask dispense vibes. And yeah. I'm super into cask dispense vibes and yeah. cask dispensed beers. Yeah. Let it let it warm up a little bit and you got yourself a, a genuine non-cast cask ale. Right. I think that's a deconstructed cask ale. There we go. All that. <laughs> yeah. If we didn't like add the coconut and you had to like assemble it in your glass, we'd fully be uh, deconstructing this. I think this turned out really good. 6.2%. Uh, like that's a lovely place to be. Yeah. Um, it's not, you know, for American drinkers, it's not wasting anybody's time, nor mm -hmm. is it going to bowl anybody over. I love gently ethanol ales, but I recognize how hard they are to sell in the market. So 6.2 is super nice. Yeah, nice um, kind of medium dark brown color. Um, 
mostly opaque, but you can see through it a little bit. No like real burgundy or amber to it. Uh, right. Mostly pretty much straight brown. Yeah. And other than that, easy sipping. Probably goes well with uh, a nice, uh, nice chili. Right. Maybe a nice roast. Yeah, yeah. And of course, anytime we're adding lactose to a beer or something as fun as coconut, I'm immediately going desserty. Mm-hmm. Like, this would rip with a chocolate chip cookie. Um, <laughs> it'd be pretty good with a peanut butter cookie. Man, I'm definitely buying cookies today. Uh, maybe maybe a, a mint cookie. Uh, Ooh. Just, just start our cookie cast uh, right? Right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> Don't at me. <laughs> Dude, this is lovely. We done did it again. And uh, huge shouts to Ola for collabing with us on this. We're going to figure out a way to uh, get some of this beer, you know, out to the island or something. Yeah. At least a picture. Yeah, put it right back in the biohazard containment vessel we got it in and a bunch of dried ice and we can open it up like a chest from a Resident Evil movie. Yeah. Oh, my God. That's perfect. Uh, cheers. Cheers. House Unruffled was created by Anna Scott. We record at Hen House Brewing Company's Palace of Barrels in Petaluma, California. Our producer is Brian Henderson, and our associate producers are Josh Staples and Fridge. The music you've been listening to was written and performed by our San Francisco account rep McLean from his album Speechless and Speechless 2, which you can find on Apple Music, Spotify, Tidal, and anywhere one finds dope music. If you have a question or comment about this or any episode of Hen House Unruffled, please let us know by calling 707-347-9425 to leave a message. You can also send an email to podcast at henhousebrewing.com. For more information, visit www.henhousebrewing.com or stop by one of our Bay Area tasting rooms. The voice you've been listening to is Imani Russell Black. Please listen and drink responsibly. 